Give up. It's wonderful to see you. And let's let's just start with the obvious here, Galia. We're calling this series Reimagining Post-Corporate Careers. But in your case, we might call it pivoting to a purpose, purposeful portfolio. After more than 30 years of your top roles at Coca-Cola and some really meaningful marketing positions that you had at Unilever, you quickly moved to a new phase of your career with a focus on individual purpose. And we're really eager to learn from your success. So let's start with your family upbringing. Um, you and I have talked before, and I knew that, know that you grew up in a really multicultural home where you experienced a lot of diverse backgrounds, perspectives, and food. Um, so can you share more about that? And what are some of the lessons that you learned growing up that carried into your career? Yeah. Look, the, my family um, came from very different places, and they made Istanbul their home. Um, so this is why, like, you know, I grew up with four different languages and it's speaking only a few. Um, and then, like, you know, as you said, the food was so different uh, between the Mediterranean cooking and all the, like, you know, Russian and Eastern European borscht and piroshki. So it was really a lot of, like, you know, different tastes. But more importantly, we had differences in, in perspective uh, at home. And um, that, that brought a lot of um, diversity, I should say. I was more the introverted kind as well. So um, I listened quite a bit uh, and tried to be invisible. Uh, I always had an opinion, but I was really very introverted. So that helped me with my, uh, with my listening skills. Um, and I also like, you know, learned early enough um, to appreciate um, like, you know, different perspectives and took something to learn from from each person, from everyone. I guess these were really um, like, you know, big learnings as I started uh, my school years and then uh, my career. Uh, and at the same time, like, you know, the, the high adaptability, quote unquote, was very valued at the family, probably because of the, like, you know, all the immigrations that mm -hmm. they had to um, go through. Uh, and like, you know, accountability was big. Like, you know, if you were asked something, you had to, to do it. So um, like, you know, if you didn't do something that you promised, wow, that was a big, big deal um, at the family. And all of these, I mean, partly they are values, partly like, you know, their approaches, but they helped me with the inclusion, with the person who I am, actually. And I wasn't a different person at work than the one that I was like, you know, at home. So, yeah. It, it carried through. It sounds like, I mean, the themes I heard is, you know, really a thirst for learning and listening, uh, the resilience, appreciating diversity and accountability, all are great leadership qualities. So why don't we shift a little bit to your career story? Can you walk us through your journey, especially your leadership roles and, and um, beyond those great foundations, you know, what other things um, you, know, you think really contributed to your successful career? I started uh, in Turkey, which is my home country. Uh, and I always wanted to, to work for multinationals. I really aspired to a corporate life. Um, I loved the teamwork and like, you know, um, so I, it's really like, you know, I, I really pursued something I wanted. I started my career as a marketeer and then um, well into my career, I changed um, like, you know, paths and I moved to uh, general management, which gave me the opportunity actually to, to taste a little bit of like, you know, various things and to be able to lead like, you know, an entirety of an, um, of a region. Um, the, what I really liked, um, like, you know, in my journey is the fact that I was able to encounter with various nationalities, with various cultures. Um, and I met like, you know, lots of great people, worked with like, you know, amazing people on my journey. Uh, but I also was able to, uh, to break my thirst in terms of like, you know, working with differences, different cultures, like, you know, one day you would like, you know, work with, um, let's say, Romania and Croatia, another day you would work with Middle East. And then like, you know, when I went to uh, Mexico, that was yet another culture. But funnily enough, you also find a lot of similarities. So I really enjoyed that part um, of my work. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. So... <laughs> So you had some really key roles at uh, Coca-Cola spanning the multiple continents I spoke of earlier in multiple countries. And 
Um, and for several years away, along the way, um, I know you, when we talked before, you said you were thinking ahead to when you might move on from this successful corporate career. And so in 2021, kind of reached an inflection point and you stepped away from some pretty intense role in Coca-Cola Mexico. So can you share a bit more about what led you to make that change? Yeah, you said it well. Um, so to set the context, as I said, like, you know, I enjoyed corporate life. So, and I was lucky, you know, I was, I felt valued. I was trusted. So I was given opportunities and I don't take any of this as um granted because I think they were very like you know I was like at the right place at the right time uh, and I enjoyed it and I was delivering as well um but I also like you know maybe it's a professional deformation but whatever I start I always think about how things should conclude like you know I would go on on holidays we would go on holidays as a family and I was like on the first day I was always like you know I would think about how it's going to end like you know what what kind of um, like emotions we would be in as a family as it ends and everything so as I said like it's some sort of a deformation um, so I always have that closure or th that idea uh, of how to bring closure to something when I start uh, like a new journey. So that was true for my corporate um, life as well. So for like, you know, for quite a few years, like, you know, I always thought about like, you know, when should I conclude it? You know, what's the right time? Um, for many, like you know, reasons, what's the right time also to move on and to do something, um, something else, something new? So all of these questions were in my mind, despite the fact that I was really enjoying what I was uh, doing. And then what happened is that, um, um, like you know, clearly COVID happened, and right before that, my father passed passed away. Um, so during COVID, we all faced I presume with with mortality you know like you know with, oh. with the fact that like um life is not finite right uh, so life is finite so and these were like you know the the questions and the pieces that I was juggling as well uh, and there were a lot of changes happening everywhere in the business in the society a lot of changes happening and my company was going through some changes as well. So that's like, you know, because of these trigger points, I said, maybe, you know, it's the right time for me to move on and to start something, you know, completely new, a new life maybe. Uh, but when I, when I made that decision, I really was full of gratitude. Like, you know, um, I had this feel of being content, um, and again, I know that this is very special, so not to be taken for granted, but I, I was very happy, like, you know, with uh, what I learned, what I have taken, what I have given. So there wasn't anything, any unfinished business, if you like, you know, I was, I was ready to move on. And when you're, when you face such a, like, you know, big decision, I always joke that it was a small decision uh, for the mankind, but a big one for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know... Or when you face that clearly um you have to feel it with your like the full body needs to feel it so that's why i'm able to say that there wasn't any unfinished business i was really truly with everything i was ready to move on and that's how it happened so that's that's really wonderful that that intentionality um i think really comes through you know both in your personal life and your professional life and so it is wonderful that you were able to accomplish what you set out to do and and now think ahead to new things. And that's a good way to segue to, you know, you had such broad experience working in so many different countries in different roles, the marketing background, the PL, the general management, um, and really deep expertise. So there are a lot of direct different directions that you could have gone in when you left Coca-Cola. And a lot of people think that they need to move fast when they make these decisions. But I understand you took some time. Um, to really reflect and sort of take a purposeful pause um, where you kind of tapped into what I think you called your re reservoir of memories. So why did you decide to do that, Kalia? And, and how did that play out? Can you tell us more about that? Yeah. 
You know, I was thinking that like, you know, this is the right time uh, for me really to stop. Um, and at the at the beginning, I didn't even think about anything. The only thing that I was thinking was about the hike that I was going to take the day <laughs> after. So it was all about like eat well, um, like, you know, sleep well and do your exercise and spend lots of time outdoors. And that was the time that's last year, actually, that was the time when I um, made a list of all the books that I wanted to read for so many years, like Nobel Prize winners, the the less fun books, you know, whatever, like, you know, I really that was a time uh, it I resemble it to to the summer vacations that we had when we were young. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're just given permission to do like, you know, the things that trigger your curiosity. Relax and enjoy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, spend a a lot of time outdoors and um, so I, I didn't do much of a reflection then I mean I really enjoyed it that's like you know quite a few weeks uh, went by like that but I knew that I needed a sabbatical and um, because there was a certain way of thinking that I had adopted over the years certain routines uh, and I just wanted to like you know remember um what it was like, you know, before I started that whole, like, you know, the corporate journey, which put me like clearly into, I mean, it, it puts everybody into a box at the end of the day. Um, so I, I spent some time like with myself, if you like, with my family, with my loved ones. I deliberate during that time, I deliberately gave a little bit of a break to my existing network and because like you know I had so many great people like around me and they they were very um, interested but also like they were interested let's say uh, in what I was going to do so all the time and I was getting the question of so what are you going to do uh, what is your next big thing you know <laughs> these were like you know the questions and I I said like I really am not going to be able to deal with it right now so I'm really on holidays I'm going to do it and then we can like you know think about like you know what's um what's next whatever that that might be so therefore like I truly took a um, a break and then there was a time when I was ready um, to explore a little more like you know intentionally and clearly there were areas like you know that I was in like that I was very interested in for years so I I took those um, like um, I had some write-ups uh, in terms of like you know what I was interested in. so I took those up I looked at those, but at the same time, I worked also with um, with great individuals, um, occupational, like, you know, an occupational psychologist who looked at, like, you know, who spent time with me, with my coach. And um, so I had a coach. Um, so together we looked at things that really interest me. So he talked to me about his perspective like you know where he sees me based on my interests and everything so all of this I took them in and um, I didn't like you know embrace them all but I listened uh, and I took them in because it was really a huge opportunity for me to listen to um, to all this like you know um, inputs if you like and um, so what happened then is that like I I was ready to move on with some structured thinking I needed that like you know structured mm -hmm. thinking so this is when I applied to an executive program at Harvard Business School um, which took like you know something like seven months um, and the idea there was that I needed like the structure a little more uh, to frame my thinking I needed to reset myself a little bit, like, you know, from the perspective that I needed to see like new approaches, new business models, like, you know, different perspectives. So that reformatting was something that um, I truly missed. Um, so, you know, it was the right time to do that, if you like. And then, like, I was also looking forward to have uh, a little bit of a different network than the one that that I had. And um, so it was a very enriching experience. So after that break, that unlearning and learning period uh -huh. started, if you like. Um, and that was like, you know, it really helped me. Uh, and then I was ready. And um, that's really this year. I was ready 
uh, like, you know, to think about what areas that I need to explore, what really takes my heart, you know, the interests that I have. And I'm still in the exploration stage, but um, there was a time like, you know, when um, I got, I gave myself the permission to reimagine, reimagine myself, reimagine what I wanted to do. Uh, and I even remember the time, like, you know, when that changed, ha that change happened in me. Um, and that's where all this, like, you know, the new exploration um, started. And one thing opens, like, you know, leads you to another thing. So one window opens another window. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like, you know, you basically um, plan for your own, like, treasure hunt, uh, if you like. So it's really like that. It was a puzzle. Uh, the puzzle is out there, but I'm I'm digging into Three like pieces it. together. Sure. Yeah, and then there was a time, Katie, um, when like you know I wasn't able to make any commitments. Like I didn't want to to make any commitments, um, and that's I think when I wasn't ready to make any commitments. But on the way, you start exploring, you start talking to people. Like you know, as I said, things are opening, and then. Um, you also find yourself at a time like you know when you really want to make um, um, commitments um, but I think the right timing was so critical for me if it had been before I would have uh, probably jumped to another um, corporate role uh, which would have been maybe fine as well but like that wasn't like you know why I made the big change right. so I'm happy that I took the time and I gave myself a little bit of a space um, to rethink and reframe things if you like even reframing myself. Mm -hmm. I, I imagine Galia that there maybe was some pressure from um, some friends, former colleagues or maybe even some family members who were who maybe had viewed you in a different way and could there did you have some pressure from some others about you should be moving faster or you should be doing things I, I mean I just love your groundedness and you seem so true to yourself which I think is something we can all learn from and not letting those others who are trying to identify or you know force an identity that maybe really isn't who you are so how did you did that happen and if so how did you deflect you know, there was certainly a lot of pressure from others, but it wasn't because they were pressuring me. It was because they were saying things and I took those, like their words into such a way, like, you know, I, I like, you know, I took them in, in a way that put pressure on me. So it was really me. I mean, it wasn't them. I mean, they were just interested. Um, maybe my family was at one point even worried that like you know I wasn't going to be happy or something so it was really out of care uh, for you yeah coming from a very good place but the thing is sometimes you have to protect yourself um, and like you know put a little bit of a uh, of a distance um, <laughs> because you need that time you need that that space if you like so I was put I was the one putting pressure on me and I was just using those words or those like you know questions and then I started finding like you know some <laughs> some ways to deal with it like you know for the people who were asking so what's the next big thing or like what are you going to do um and I'm still doing it sometimes I just say you know I'm retired it's really a lot of fun <laughs> <laughs> which is like you know um but the thing is, sometimes you have to stop the conversation. And sometimes, like, you know, it's good to have that conversation. So it really depends on your mood. But there were a lot of, like, you know, ups and downs. Um, and funnily enough, like, you know, it usually comes from the people who you're emotion more emotionally attached to, like your course, kids. Yeah. Your, right. Like, and like you said, it comes from a place of love. And that, so you have to appreciate it. Totally. Yeah. Totally. But that's why, like, you know, one needs to think, I mean, my big learning out of this is that um, we all live in networks, in communities. It's just we, I mean, I learned again how to how to leverage them, um, like in a way that that would help me uh, at the right time. So I started like, you know, more uh, getting engaged with the people that I have less of an emotional like you know um, mm -hmm. attachment to 
Uh, at the beginning, they helped me more. And then later on, like, you know, it was obvious all the loved ones and everything. So, of course. Of course. Well, so um, we've gotten a couple of questions in already that are related to this. Um, people are asking a little bit about the timing of your break and recognizing it's different for everyone. Um, but was it the break you took, which was truly a break, stepping away, just um, rejuvenating yourself, relaxing, walking, et cetera? Was there a time frame there? And then when you kind of got into the next phase where you started engaging more, any, any guidance on timing? Yeah. So at the beginning, I said, like, you know, because I had been working for 32 years for um, for multinationals, I said probably a year, like, you know, would do good to me. But it was just like, you know, I didn't have any idea why I said, OK, I mean, let's say a year and then we'll see what happens. Um, and I, I said, like, you know, I'm not going to be totally away from business, like, you know, um, if you're away for a year. So I'm um, like, you know, it works. But during that year. Um, so probably six months or something, I basically went back to school. Uh, so I was ready, like, you know, to go back to, so that back to school period became part of my sabbatical. And then when I finished it, it was maybe a little more than a year. Um, I already had started like, you know, talking and exploring, um, different things. So that was it. Like, you know, I started with a year in mind. Good. So I'm also um, afraid, like, you know, I was concerned that if I would say a month, it would be too early. And then you make that commitment to yourself. And then you don't feel that, like, you know, you're being too, true to yourself. You know, it, like, at least, like, you know, that was the promise to myself. If mm -hmm, you like. mm -hmm. that's, that's excellent. So uh, apologies if I'm mispronouncing the, the name. Sharita um, asked about what are some like five key things that you did in your transition? And that relates to one of the questions I had as well is, you know, what steps did you take? You mentioned a coach. Um, you know, I know, I think you had said before something about going through an assessment process and the strategic getting out and talking to colleagues and to find out what's out there and learn more. So what were some of the key steps that you took along the way that others could yeah. learn? Um, look, the, co the the relationship that I had with my coach was really very important. And that was a service that was given by, by my company. A number of um, like my friends uh, earlier on as well, I know that they um, some of them took that opportunity. Some of them didn't for various reasons. But when I was given that opportunity, I said, I really am going to leverage that. Like, you know, this is a great, great opportunity. So let's like, you know, let's see how, how it, um, it goes. Um, and that's how we started, like, you know, really digging into things, uh, including the assessment um, uh, with, the, with the psychologist. Um, and then like, you know, so that coaching bit was important for me, but there were also many other uh, mentors that I reached out and um, I call them mentors. If you were to ask them, they, maybe they wouldn't call themselves mentors, but they were mentors to me. Uh, and I like, you know, sometimes I would learn uh, what advice they would like, you know, give me. One of the advice, a piece of advice that I um, I heard as an example was really to um, not to like, you know, jump on opportunities um, immediately to give yourself the time to think about it. Um, a person actually, the, the psychologist told me that like, you know, she, he said like, you know, you're a little bit of a challenge junkie. <laughs> what do you mean challenge junkie uh, he said like you're really jumping like you know, from one challenge to the other and you love it and that was so true it it wasn't the case that like you know I knew this about myself but it's so like you know important when somebody else talks to you about it you really that means something so therefore he said like you know make sure that you don't jump on things just because of the challenge that it it represents like do it because you like Mm -hmm. So, so I used a number of people, like I reached out, you, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, I really reached out to a number of people who, who I thought like, you know, would give me a good piece of advice and each of them did. So, and like, you know, you take, you don't, maybe you don't take the totality of everything that they say, but you take bits and pieces and it really um, helps. And whomever I, by the way, whomever I reached out um they were happy to help so this is so amazing when you ask for help 
people are there like you know um so don't help. be afraid is what oh no no yeah. no no that's uh it's it was one of the best experiences that I had honestly well and, and it, I think yeah you know that red thread you were looking for not you know you listen to all of the inputs and from that you know kind of gives you some themes or some things that help uh, helpful input for you, um, it seems like. And one of the things you had talked about earlier is it sounded like the break that you took was pretty unstructured. It was really about just, you know, you've been in a really intense global role, so that, that schedule is pretty grueling. So just taking a breather and getting some rest so that then you could be more thoughtful in your next step. But you also said that you liked some structure. So was the structure of the, I think you said the service, which is a ICEO, was that helpful to you? I mean, any, anything about structure that you could say? Yeah. Um, look, I have, I also have to say that um, um, I had an idea on like, you know, where I needed help. Uh, so I was very open uh, in terms of the questions that, that I had in mind. So, uh, you know, when when you look at yourself in the mirror and say that, like, these are the things that are really struggle, uh, that's where people can help, I think. That's what happened with my relationship with ICEO. And then there was, I mean, the ICEO has so many great um, resources as well. So we really opened all of them, like, you know, to me from introducing, like, you know, people to um, like, you know, some, some pieces of uh, reading. So I was able to, um, to talk about these, but most importantly, I was able to talk about also my, some of the anxieties that I have. And it's so important to learn that some other people are also like going through this. So you're not alone on this, you know, uh, it's, it was very valuable to me. Mm -hmm. The community uh, for sure. Um, well, um, so very helpful. I'm, I'm, I'm monitoring lots of great questions coming in. Um, let's just shift a little bit now to, we've talked about, um, you know, your personal and professional life. We've talked about the transition. Let's talk a little bit about where you are now, and then I'll pull in some of the questions that we're getting. Um, so, um, you know, you, you're, you're really focused now, I know, on purpose-led organizations and social enterprises. You're on some advisory boards for Harvard and Georgia State Business Schools. You're doing some work with Ashoka and investment boards. So, um, how did the how did the transition that you went through and the steps you took lead you to deciding you wanted to do a portfolio versus maybe going to a corporate role? And what can others learn from that? You know, all this, the process that we talked about, that unfolded into certain like spaces. They were big spaces. Um, and I, I, like, you know, from a process standpoint, I really had this wall um, where like, you know, I was putting post-its, like, you know, this interests me, that interests, that I don't like. Um, and I also spent time on, the pieces like, you know, of the corporate life that I loved, um, that I would like to continue having in my life. I mean, partly like as an example, teamwork was uh, was part of it. Like I love working with, with people. So therefore like, you know, it like whatever I'm going to do, I said, it really requires to have a human element. So that sort of, so it was really like, you know, um, almost like design thinking, if you like, um, but as protagonist, I would use my own voice. And so I used that that wall uh, to start like, you know, putting all these um, little little post-its and they started like, you know, forming spaces, themes, if you like. And I realized um, that I had three themes um, coming like, you know, from that work. Mm -hmm. And then what I did, and I'm going to talk about these three themes, but what I did then was um, I based on the suggestion of one of my mentors, I went back to my um, diaries that I kept over the years or the little write-ups, the little notes to myself. He, that's like, it was him um, he, he who talked about like, you know, the reservoir of memories. He had said that like, you know, look at what you told yourself then 
because he said you're going to find certain similarities over the years and that was it like you know there were a lot of like similarities in terms of what took my attention then um, and that was yet another input to to my like you know development of spaces uh, if you like so I, I realized that I this is the time that I should go a little more and serious, if you like, about the social entrepreneurship. Uh, I loved the idea, like, you know, of what what these people uh, do since my time when I was leading the, the foundation for Coca-Cola in Turkey and then in Mexico. So it's not exactly philanthropy. I was more in the in the entrepreneurship of it. So it's really like, you know, the sweet spot between um, the social good and a business. Um, mm -hmm. So I said, uh huh. I mean, that's that's an interesting one. So let me go into those circles. And then, as I was like, you know, talking to people, um, I was referred to um, the Royal Society of Arts and Commerce. They are like, you know, a group of um, um, change makers, um, yeah, one of the biggest hubs actually in the world, and they're doing a lot of like, you know, thinking. So I started like, you know, getting involved with with the with that thought leadership that they're doing, engaging like, you know, in terms of what they're doing, and then I got related like, you know, during that time with Ashoka, yet another um, global hub for social change makers. So you see, I started like, you know, going into um, like different circles, different than what I had before. And I started learning during that journey. I started also mentoring some ventures, some leaders. Uh, they learned from me, I learned from them. So it was really a very like, you know, mutually it was a, um, a good engagement, I would say. Uh, and at the same time, I also realized that I would like to share, give back some of the experience that I have uh, built. And for that, like, you know, um, I'm doing a little bit of guest lecturing, um, like, you know, writing a few things, um, sometimes doing some public speeches, you know, that sort of like, you know, um, so that's like, you know, think like thought leadership, um, if you like, I might call it, or I might call it like more sharing uh, mm -hmm. what I have in hand. Entering kind of at scale, I think some of this has Precisely. Talked. And I like, you know, there were um, a lot of women who reached out. So I'm very gladly like, you know, mentoring them um, and sharing some of the like, you know, experiences that I had. But again, I'm also learning a lot from them. A lot of young talent um, has reached out. So I have quite a few like, you know, mentees. And I had always enjoyed the the reverse mentorship as well, so that's the the piece that I'm uh, I'm loving, and then the governance piece. So I'm um, like you know, the the three spaces like are getting together actually. Um, I I think they're getting together. I'm part of the um, investment committee of of the the very first and inaugural uh, social impact fund in in Turkey. Um, so I'm like, you know, engaging with some of the new ventures um, and like, you know, deciding together with the other members of the of the investment committee where we should like, you know, invest. Um, and it's like it's a learning journey. And one of the things that I put myself as a like, you know, as a uh, as a principle is that whatever happens i'm going to uh, continue my learning journey and uh, my exploration so this it's not yet done i mean things my life is continuing uh, to that end you know uh, thirst for learning definitely comes through um i uh, a couple of questions have come in and i think you've answered them emma greenwell asked um how did you get clear on uh, what you wanted and stay on course when you're pulled into areas that maybe were less comfortable. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> Conrad Smith asked something kind of similarly. Uh, he says, um, for some work becomes a life purpose, but life's purpose is not only work. And, and just you kind of just frame that now you're um, doing a lot. You always were giving back even at work, but um, have you been working through your purpose and framing this differently for you? So just yeah. that connection to Maybe getting outside your comfort zone and more more purpose focused. Yeah. 
Look, first of all, it was a challenge for me um, to be focused because like, you know, I was exploring and the more ex the more exploratory work, work that I did, I wanted to learn more. So it was like, you know, it was really a uh, flavor of the day. You know, one day I would look at something, another day I would look at something else. Um, I remember that that really started concerning me because I missed the time when I was so focused when I was a uh, when I was at corporate, um, and then I realized that this my my job now is exploring. So I said, okay, this is your job. But then I said, okay, I mean, let's put some time frame to that because this can become a lifetime exploration. And maybe I would like to go deeper, like in certain areas. And the reality is that like, you know, when I give a little more time to myself, naturally things started um, emerging. So you know it, like, you know, you know that I want to go a little more um, deeper in, in certain areas. Um, so it, it really happened naturally, and I realized that if I had forced it, uh, it wouldn't like you know have happened. Now, the purpose. <laughs> I love that that question comes because I think it's very important. Um, I don't think that it's fair uh, to ask someone go and write your purpose down. You know, this is a process and sometimes it takes like a whole lifetime um, to find your purpose. And sometimes some people are maybe lucky, like, you know, to, to be able to articulate it um, well. I'm not one of those. Uh, so I'm much more into spaces rather than one, like, you know, purpose uh, paragraph that I, that I, that I have. I just know that I am willing to give what I have. I'm willing to share, I'm willing to contribute. Um, and I'm willing to contribute to a, like, you know, to social good. So these are the pieces uh, that I know for now. Um, and I like, you know, after putting some pressure on myself, I decided that I'm not going to write a, a purpose for myself because I think this is putting too much pressure honestly on me. And I also believe that, like, you know, I'm sure that this it's going to, like, articulate itself better over time, but it's also going to change. So purpose evolves, you know, this is what I, I noticed, I realized uh, as part of my whole learning, like, in that, uh, in that period. <laughs> well, purpose a is a big idea. word, you know. It is, it's a good, and it's, we hear it a lot, and I think giving yourself permission, again, to not put that pressure on yourself, I think is good advice. A um, couple of questions, I'm going to pull them together. This is from Luz Rogers. She says, Galia is very introspective and methodical about her approach um, in determining what you're going to step into. That's very interesting. How do you handle the emotional fear component yeah. of the moves? And then another one, this one's anonymous, says, you know, um, as a woman, we sometimes place value on what we do and less on who we are and the value that that brings to different cultures. So, you know, kind of a two-parter. Um, was there any emotion that you felt or any fear as you went through this process and how did you navigate that? And then how did you focus on not just the work, but but the not confuse your who with your do? I guess that's a way of saying it. <laughs> I am so scared. I was so scared. I was like, you know, I was so scared because I thought that like, you know, I, there were times when I asked myself, what are you doing with yourself? Like, you know, are you, I mean, is this what you should be doing now? Or you should, should you be delivering something else? You know, um, I was very afraid that I was, I was going to, um, let down my loved ones because like, you know, I was an identity before and I thought that I was going to lose my identity. And that was a huge fear for me. I can't, uh, I can't say enough about it. I was really very scared that I was going to lose like, you know, who I am. And then um, now clearly I read a lot of books as you can imagine, talk to a lot of people and everything. And then I realized that this, this whole process is actually adding uh, on me as a person. It's even like it's further developing me. And one person told me, he said, like, you know, 
she said um she said if we are um if we had been just if we, we have been just like you know assessed by what we do we would have been called human doings not human beings so and she said like this is your time to be not to do so the picture of success changes you know um the picture of success that i thought i thought that i had was changing and again i gave myself the permission to rethink like you know but i had to like you know um, remember it as well so there were a lot of times that i would like i would come to terms with myself that i'm not going to be fearful like people value me because of who i am people like you know because they love me this that whatever um and like you know not because what i have achieved or whatever uh, but then two days later i would forget it so what i did was i really put everything into writing so i would go back and like you know read what i was um what i had written <laughs> before and it was that was also the time when i started like you know putting together a um a, like you know a bulleted journal uh, because I was freaking out that I was wasting my time, another like, you know, freaking out moment. Uh, and I said, this is the worst thing that you can do. Like, you know, you shouldn't be wasting your time, this, that, whatever. So that's why I started like, you know, putting everything on a diary bullet form, it, like, you know, to say that these are the things that I have done in terms of my own learning, in terms of the network that I built, in terms of like, you know, um these people that I reached out and what like you know what I have done for myself uh like you know to advance my my myself like professionally uh, all of these writings really helped me um the path um that I took the decisions that I made on the way the learnings uh, that I had one forgets very easily fear is so strong that like you know it captures you and that's a terrible thing so anyways i had to like re remind myself of all that yeah, that's uh that's excellent and you know uh the person that asked the question about fear uh, sent a note saying thank you so much for your honesty and candor i'm scared right now too and you just helped me immensely mm -hmm. my deepest gratitude and I, I would say that with many of our of our clients and partners you know um if you think about your career galia probably for the last several roles that you played, you just were asked, Galia, we want you to come do this now. So this is the first time in probably many years for you and many maybe that are listening in here where you're in a situation where you're not really sure what's next. And that is, it's natural um, to be, um, that uncertainty can be fearful. So um, yeah. it's wonderful for you. Interestingly, interestingly, you reminded me like, you know, a few weeks ago, um, there was there was something that I like, you know, I wanted to apply for and I did, uh, but it required uh, a cover letter. <laughs> so for the first time in my life, seriously, I sat down and wrote a, a cover letter and I was thinking to myself, oh, man, you know, after all these years now, you're up to like, you know, a cover letter. <laughs> and I was <laughs> and the person who was in charge of all this, like, you know, process, I told them, I said, like, it's the first time I, I wrote a, a cover letter and it's quite a character taming. <laughs> <laughs> like act if you like so we learn you know <laughs> it's okay <laughs> oh that's funny well a couple of questions are coming in and just so now you're in a very different role different roles instead of being a full-time you know the, the president of coca-cola mexico now you've got this portfolio so some questions around how do you manage the balance of work um and um you know and your life different cases yeah yeah clearly it's yeah that's a good one it's a different life you know the cycle has changed um so because the cycle has changed the picture of success has changed uh, so like you know i really spent some time to depict that new cycle and what it means for me um if I like, you know, at the times when I forget it, like, or before when I, um, when I didn't have that, like, you know, the, the description of that cycle, I was very much into that thinking that I'm wasting my time. 
Um, so I, I built a new cycle in terms of like, you know, my, when do I do, um, uh, like, you know, my the exercise I like in the morning and then like, you know, what is my morning uh, routine, the ritual, quote unquote. Uh -huh. So I had a different ritual. Now I have a different one, like completely different. So uh, I'm reflecting on these, you know, on a weekly basis, like, you know, every week I have this like uh, Friday morning that I think about such things to say, how have I done? How do you feel this week? And uh, look yourself in the mirror. Are you like you're happy with yourself? That kind of a thing. Um, and uh, like I built a um, couple of new routines uh, and I and I let time pass so that I'm like, you know, getting adjusted to that. There are there were pieces that I wasn't like, you know, happy about. Uh, so I'm changing them on the way, but it's really um, reflection, reflection, reflection. You know, mm -hmm. I'm I'm taking a lot of time, like, you know, to think about and um, yeah, maybe one more thing that that might like, you know, feel familiar to some of you, like when you're out of um, the corporate life, the distinction the separation between weekday and week end is not as clear as it used to be so there are times over the weekends that I work um, because like I have less to do during the weekday so this part as an example is an area that I'm not happy with because I, I decided that I truly like you know weekends for myself and then you do whatever else like you know um, you want to do during the weekday so I'm evolving as we move along but it's okay I mean even if I make some mistakes which I do on the way that make me miserable I go back and I said okay I now you need to change it you know <laughs> well, it's, a, it's a journey there's no doubt and um you know so so now it sounds like you've gone through a very thoughtful transition you're in a good place now but um continuing to evolve so what do you see next yeah so um what i see as next is that definitely the learning piece is going to continue um i'm very like you know on the way i i saw that i'm very interested in mentorship i really like it so that's maybe like you know a little more that i'm going to do there uh -huh. definitely the social entrepreneurship is something that i'm going to like you know um, really pursue a little more into governance i would say uh, and maybe more structured in terms of like, you know, the here and there, the little scripts that I have, we'll see what comes out of it. So it's a journey, as you said, Katie, one day at a time. Great. Um, we got a question from an anonymous attendee who just, uh, and we've gotten this question uh, in previous webinars, so I'll ask it. Um, you know, you, you achieved very high levels, uh, the president of uh, Coca-Cola a couple of times. Um, for someone maybe that's at a more mid-level, you know, didn't maybe go to the, the C-suite level that, that you achieved, is your advice scalable? Is this something that they can, can apply to them too? Do you have any insights for someone who maybe isn't uh, at your level? Um, look, I'm, I'm a person who I, I don't usually like giving advice because I think everything is very situational and very person-focused. So therefore, to that end, I am not sure if any of that advice is um, scalable to to like whomever, you know. Uh, but as I think about the middle um, managers, I think their life is much more difficult compared to um, the the new starters or compared to senior leaders, because as a senior leader, you get a space. Uh, and like, you know, you create that space and you know what you're driving against and everything. And there are certain like, you know, pieces that, um, yeah, that you decide upon. Uh, with middle managers, it's a little bit of a different story. They are usually in between trying to manage the balance, like, you know, between the lower levels of the pyramid and the higher levels of the pyramid. So to that end, if I had been a, um, like, you know, a, a middle uh, manager, probably I would have needed even a bigger, like a longer sabbatical, if you like, starting from there, and even a more thoughtful uh, process. But the pieces of the, um, of the process really, re like, you know, relies on, on the person. So it's very personal. Individual. Good. 
Um, uh, trying to read through a lot of questions. Of really, really, a lot of great questions. Thank you all so much, participants. That you've really enriched in this. Um, um, I think I think a lot of them. There's um, some repetition. I think. Uh, I guess just let's just wrap things up with, um, you know, are there, is there, if you had to do something over, if you had any do overs, is there something you would have done differently that the, uh, our, our guests can listen or can, can learn from? And then just any parting advice you would have for people that are uh, going through a transition similar to yours? Yeah. Well, there are lots of things that I would have done differently in my corporate life, like you for sure. But for this period, um, let's say in the last like year and a half, uh, I think I like, you know, maybe one thing that I would um, do differently, which I don't know how to, uh, but I would put less pressure on myself, you know. Uh, I mean, but it's like retrospective now, now that like, you know, I lived through it, now I can say it, but I think we all have to like, you know, face it at one, um, like we face, you face it and then you learn out of it. But if I could uh, change certain things, I think I put too much of a pressure uh, on myself and that was so unnecessary. It was really like, you know, that whole time was a gift that I gave myself. And I think I spent too much time worrying um uh, like you know trust in yourself is the big learning that i'm uh, getting it's okay you know that's things good. are going to move on that's it are you applying that now i think i am that's i'm good. in a much better like you know space now <laughs> wonderful wonderful okay um well thank you so much uh, galia for your time thank you uh, to all of you who asked questions and for just joining us today. We really appreciate it. I did get a question or asking if there will be a recording offered and absolutely you will get an uh, email um, <clears throat> from us uh, with the recording so that you can listen to it and um, share it. And um, hopefully, I, and I, I think I'm going to listen to it again. Well, yeah, <laughs> I'd like to. Thanks for the great questions to everyone <laughs> and to Katie for sure. <laughs> So thank you all. We'll wrap things up and give you back the rest of your day and um, hope everyone has a great week. Thanks, Galia. Bye.